We've got a lot of interesting data on our hands. And despite the recent jobs report on Friday that was absolutely amazing at double what was expected, we still got a lot to think about over the next few months. The labor market is strong, but people are running out of savings. Credit card spending is at an all time high, indicating that people just can't afford things. Student loans are coming due. Commercial real estate is in a slump. So now we have the 10 year curve minus the two year. So what we know is the two years way higher than the 10 years and that's the inversion. As you can see, we just had the largest inversion that we saw since the 1980s. But if you look here, it's uninverting and it's doing it pretty fast. This is a re-steepening of the yield curve. Now you might think, wait, this is good news. But I want to point out that usually when the re-steepening occurs, that's when the pain follows. And look here, consumer spending is set to slow as inflation drags on households. Signs of a slowdown ahead. The larger than expected spending spree coincides with a gloomier outlook from consumers who see their financial prospects dwindling in the months ahead, the Fed survey data showed Monday. And while that might be the case, I would like to point out that this article was posted before Friday, and I mentioned the job market losing steam. But as we know from Friday, that isn't the case at all. And this is rather interesting. U.S. businesses borrowing for equipment falls 2% in July. They report economic activity for the nearly $1 trillion equipment finance sector, saying that credit approvals total 75.3%, down from 76.1% in June. But what does this mean? It means, well, if companies are not investing in new equipment, it's only a matter of time that we see companies not investing in new employees, or rather new hires. So guess what? Getting a better than expected jobs report as we just did, might be a trend that might start to go down in the coming months. But then again, we're seeing that banks are tightening lending standards on loans and credit and credit cards. We see a slowdown. And here you can see total consumer credit owned and securitized, shown in the rate of change of billions of dollars. But if we compare it to the delinquency rates on credit cards, shown in red on the year over year rate of change, look what's happening. As credit creation slows, we see delinquencies rise. You see, in a debt based economy, as credit creation slows, less, there's less money to pay on debt. And then people go into delinquency. Every everything slows down and then go into default. But if we just cut out the middleman, now look at the net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for credit cards. And against the delinquency rate on credit cards, you can see that these two lines have a very close relationship. That as banks tighten lending standards, delinquency rates go up. There's no surprise that this is happening and it, we can only expect it to get worse. But the only thing that can save us is the coming CPI report. If we don't want banks to collapse and if we don't want a black swan event, we have to cut those interest rates. But we know that the Fed is more likely to cut interest rates in November, that inflation report needs to come in cool. And because of everything we know that's going on with the global economy, especially with deflation being exported from, from China, at the very least, I don't think that inflation report is going to come in too hot. In fact, this was just my prediction, but I guess prior to this jobs report on Friday, I was thinking that the next CPI report is going to come in a few bits lower than expected, but who knows, maybe it's going to come in right on target as expected, but you know, we'll see. So I'm Code Monkey Mike, software guy loves to talk about finance. Hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here.